redirecting a ship uh, that is exercising the right of transit passage through the Strait of Hormuz, um, re redirecting that ship to a different destination would not be consistent with the international law of the sea. State Department spokesman Jeff Rathke earlier today very careful in his choice of words regarding Iran. He says Iran's actions in the Strait of Hormuz really amount to a violation of international law, but he refused to comment further. Iran's aggressions towards shipping in the area has now prompted our Navy to shadow American merchant ships to protect them. But how much longer can we ignore bullying by Iran on the high seas. For more on this and other stories from the region, we're so pleased to welcome in my former colleague in the Congress, Pete Hoekstra, who is the former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Skyping in from Michigan, and right here on the anchor desk, our good friend, Professor Robert Rabil, a Middle East expert, professor at Florida Atlantic University. Doctor, first to you. Thank you. What is it going to take to stop Iran and these provocative actions there in the Gulf and elsewhere? Well, Iran is not going to stop. And why I mention that? Because it feels now it is under pressure by Saudi-led coalition. And now you have a lot of changes that's happening in Syria. Somehow in Syria, the Syrian regime backed by Iran has faced certain setbacks. So really, I don't think it's going to stop. But the Iranian, same like United States, I believe they are balancing their act very carefully. They want to tell us, listen, we are here. You cannot push us further. And we, we are telling them, listen, this is the red line, and you better be careful that you don't cross those red lines. Well, let's turn to my old colleague, Pete Hoekstra, up in Michigan. Uh, we have the professor here on the desk, but Pete, you've got the big board behind you. Educate us on this situation with the U.S. protecting cargo ships in the Strait. Is that just a temporary fix? Well, I think the whole problem, J.D., has been since we've been negotiating with Iran, Iran, we never set any preconditions for the U.S. to sit down at the table. And there's some major issues out there that we should have resolved and set up, set the expectations up front. We should have demanded the release of the four Americans that the Iranians are holding. We should have demanded that Iran recognize the right for Israel to exist as a nation state. And we should have demanded that Iran stop, you know, bullying, terrorism, whatever you want to call it, that if we're going to negotiate with you on the nu nuclear program, you have to stop your support of terrorism and outlaw activities. Remember, as these negotiations have been going forward, you know, they have participated in the overthrow of a U.S.-backed regime in Yemen, and now they've, yes, quote-unquote, redirected I'd say they've hijacked a U.S. flagship, the Marshall Islands, and now we're in a position, as we're supposed to be negotiating in good faith, U.S. Navy ships have to, you know, they have to shadow our merchant ships through the Straits of Hormuz. It's absolutely outrageous. Well, Pete, we're familiar with the political life, and some people say statecraft is stagecraft. In that context, Freshman Senator Tom Cotton, the Arkansas Republican, made headlines for challenging Iran's foreign minister on Twitter after the foreign minister said a deal with the U.S. would lift sanctions, whether Senator Cotton likes it or not. So Tom Cotton tweets him and says, hey, let's have a debate in Washington, D.C. Pete, um, is the senator being a bit too pugnacious? Do you think it's something that the foreign minister of Iran even takes seriously? Well, I think with his response, he's, uh, the foreign minister is not taking it seriously. Senator Cotton has been a champion on working towards getting a good deal. I'm a big fan of Senator Cotton. But at this point in time, I think we need to be aiming the debate at our own president. You know, his foreign policy initiatives in the Middle East have been a disaster, whether it's the initial negotiations with Iran back in 2009, whether what's happened in Yemen, Iraq, Libya, Syria, you know, Congress and the Senate needs to be involved because this president has been an architect of disaster when it comes to foreign policy in the Middle East. And if we get a bad agreement out of this, these negotiations, there's no way that we'll be able to turn back. Take a look at the failure in Libya and what that's meant to Southern Europe and our and allies in Europe. We, we understand that fully, have another Pete. bad deal. Forgive me for interrupting, the time grows yeah. short. A minute left, and there is an a, a image 
Yes. Uh, Professor Rabil, I have yes. to show you. It's been all over the internet. Yes. The, the ISIS propaganda of baby photos. Look at this, a baby wrapped in an ISIS flag blanket with a gun and a grenade next to him. What does that tell us about the nature of ISIS? 20 seconds, sir. There is nothing to surprise us about ISIS. It's a very fanatical, Islamist, radical group, and we should not be surprised about anything they do. This and is my say. We thank you very, very I much. Thank you. And uh, picture is worth a thousand words in this thank case. You. Our thanks thank to Robert Rabil here. Thank Our you. thanks to Pete Hoekstra, Skyping in from Michigan. Now, you heard what these two gentlemen had to say, and we want to hear from you. You can send your comments via email to Newsmax Prime at NewsmaxTV.com. We're also on Facebook and on Twitter. You see the addresses right there. We're coming back.